everyone so here i would like to continue with my lecture as i was discussing about the different phases and its features so here is the table which shows different phases and what were its features in different uh, you know categories so first of all in the phase 1 that is from 1901 to 21 there were high birth rate and high death rate and ultimately the growth rate was very very low and even sometimes it went to negative okay and this period is referred as to the stagnant period or the stationary period the obvious reason for high birth rate and high death rate is poor medical facility early marriage I also have added up here for high birth rate uh, you know um, factors so these are the various factors for economic a high birth rate economic and social factors like predominance of agriculture slow urbanization process and poverty uh, social factors like universality of marriage uh, lower age at the time of marriage religious and social superstitions joint family system so these were the reason for high birth and death rate now the second phase from 1921 to 51 is known as the steady population growth there were low mortality rate in this era but birth rate was still very high and also population improvement in health and sanitation throughout the country it slightly brought down the mortality rate then at the same time better transportation and also communication improved which actually helped for declining the birth rate and in this particular era we see the great economic depression 1920s and the world war second coming to the third phase that is the decade uh, that is from 1951 to 1981 this decades so these are known as the period of population explosion population explosion uh, has been very clearly explained by malthus in his theory so here average annual growth rate was very high uh, like 2.2 percent than the previous one and also uh, like uh, after independence developmental activities took place which led to low mortality rate and high fertility rate there was a sudden burst of the explosion and there was natural increase and higher growth rate besides like international migration was also there from tibet bangladesh nepal uh, and even from pakistan which led to high growth rate in this phase then the last phase that is post 1981 till present phase 4 so here birth rate declined rapidly which resulted in low growth rate that also uh, declined as because uh, development of institutions took place now um, practices of sati and child marriages are no more performed in indian society and also uh, uh, education of girl child and now there is no abandonment of the girl child because of the so called you know societal norms of keeping a boy or you know like preferring a son for heritage uh, for your uh, like societal uh, rights and all so this kind of uh, conceptions were not there anymore and people now prefer small families they have more education institutions were being set up industrialization was there and also transport and communication have boosted up the whole society so these are the four phases of growth of population in india now next when we see population growth it is not equal in whole india as you can see in this screen that 
the in kerala which is lower which is the lowest growth rate that is 9.4 then karnataka tamil nadu andhra pradesh orissa pondicherry goa and high growth rate in india can be found in gujarat maharashtra rajasthan punjab sikkim assam west bengal bihar chatisgarh and jharkhand so this is the regional variation of population growth in india next come the very special group that is the adolescent group adolescent group are is actually a very important you know component or group of population growth in india and they share this group belongs from 10 to 19 years age group and according to who this group should be paid more attention in the society because they are regarded as the youthful population which have high potential and at the same time if they are not guided properly they might be vulnerable to the society we like as of we face many challenges in the society uh, as of the adolescent people are concerned as of this group is concerned for example child marriage again is a challenge illiteracy like especially female illiteracy school dropouts then uh, you know low nutrient then high rate of maternal mortality of adolescent mothers hiv aids then uh, infections then physical and mental disability retardedness dark uh, sorry uh, drug abuse then alcoholism juvenile delinquency uh then commitments of uh you know different kind of crimes so this group is more associated with such kind of challenges so that is why we have to be we have to guide them in such a way so that this group is channelized properly and they they can be you know their potential can be used as an actual resource for the nations you know good because because this vulner they are to, so vulnerable to the nypc like as you can see here this is the growth uh, of adolescent uh, in india male is 52.7% and female is 47.34% and nypc uh 2014 which was launched in february 2014 they proposed a vision for the youth of india their main concentration was for the youth okay and what is their main aim their main aim is to encourage the youth of the country so that you know uh, they can be achieve uh, or their full potential can be achieved through enabling them or through enabling india okay to find its rightful place in the community of nation and also like there are different uh, government of india they also have formulated different skill development and entrepreneurship in the year 2015 so that different skilling activities can be carried out throughout the country for the youth so we have to be very very sensitive with the adolescent group because we it is our duty to channelize them in a proper way for the nation now here we come to the population composition okay when we say population composition it is a study of population geography where we analyze different sectors like age and sex place of residence ethnic characteristics tribes language religion marital status literacy and education occupational characteristics etc so in india population is uh, studied based on rural urban characteristics so here first of all we will study there are different compositions so first of all we are studying based on rural urban uh, composition so as you can see here we have 75 percent of population living in urban areas and 25 only in rural areas and as accordingly their activities as you, as you already know that the rural uh, society is engaged with primary activities uh, and very less percentage of secondary activities and uh, the urban area is composed of secondary and tertiary activity so this shows actually the picture of our economy of the nation
now next we have this is the linguistic composition of india so here we can see different languages spoken by different uh, groups of uh, people so here uh, like 41% the maximum uh, language spoken in india is hindi okay and the remaining uh, percentage is given here accordingly then the language family so in india actually we have four family language families the first is austric which consists of 1.38% as you can see this violet shape which belongs to austric family okay under each family there are many languages then um, for example austric in uh, austric uh, family can be found in meghalaya nicobar islands west bengal bihar orissa assam madhya pradesh maharashtra and outside india also then comes to dravidian family which consists of 20% this groups is the dravidian family the blue shape so here uh, like uh, the areas which is concentrated uh, for dravidian family is tamil nadu karnataka kerala andhra pradesh Ma madhya pradesh orissa maharashtra bihar or uh, then west bengal etc then comes the sino tibetan which consists of 0.85% so here the areas which is concentrated for sino tibetan this orange shape so the speech areas are jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh sikkim arunachal pradesh assam nagaland manipur mizoram tripura meghalaya then indo european this part the maximum below our people who, who speak who are from indo uh, european family they belong from india the maximum concentration and it is spoken outside india also including jammu and kashmir punjab himachal pradesh uttar pradesh rajasthan haryana madhya pradesh bihar orissa west bengal assam gujarat maharashtra and goa now next comes the religious composition so this is the uh this shows the concentration of religious composition hindus have 79.8 percent this this whole uh you know part 79.8 percent so maximum people belong to uh, from india is hindu belong to this religion then muslim this part 14.2 percent christians orange it is 2.3 percent six it is this one 1.7 percent buddhist 0.7 percent jains 0.4 percent and others 0.2 percent so this is the concentration of religious composition in india and according to the whole like if you see the whole uh, map of uh, india they are distributed widely in whole india now come to the working population when we say working population we have three categories of working population first is the main worker then we have marginal worker and then we have non workers main workers are those workers who work for more than 183 days or more at least for 183 days or 6 month marginal workers who works less than 183 days or less than 6 month non workers who do not have any kind of permanent work in their hand so these are the three categories of working classes working population in india next we have the occupational structure basically we have three occupational structure primary secondary and tertiary primary are those who are engaged with the directly with the nature that is um fishing mining agriculture lumbering gathering etc it consists of 54.6% then comes secondary who are engaged with the manufacturing process only 3.8% in india and then the tertiary sector who are engaged with the service sector okay transport and communication trade commerce construction repair everything 41.6% so this composition shows that maximum concentration in india we have more of primary sector they are more engaged to primary sector and remaining uh, tertiary and then comes secondary
so that is why it is rightly said that india is an agrarian country thank you so much